What is going on guys, Doomo Maggie here bringing you guys another Pokemon Duel video. Today we're going to be looking at the top 10 figures that need a buff in Pokemon Duel. Just remember this video is 100% opinionated and if you guys have your own opinion, make sure you leave it in the comments below. Sitting at number 10, we got your boy Xerneas. And in my opinion, Xerneas isn't really that bad of a figure. The only problem with Xerneas is it lacks consistency, it lacks the hard hitting move, and it lacks the synergy with the other Pokemon, considering there's not very many fairy types in the Pokemon game right now. And Fairy Mist, like, like I said, it, um, it can be handy on fairy type decks, but it, with other decks it really does not help you besides hitting, uh, you can improve it to hitting 80, which isn't really that great. Again, it's not even hitting hard, like honestly, like right now in the meta, like you need to be hitting at least 100 somewhere to be viable, unless you're like a, a Mew or something like that. But like I said, Xerneas is really not that great of a Pokemon and I think it deserves to be a buff. I think it would be cool if you had something more like Reshiram's Wheel where you have a 100 Moonblast and like a 70 Dazzling Gleam or something like that. I think that would really help out Xerneas and just being a little bit more consistent. And if you could hit the 50, if you could hit Geomancy and hit 150, that might be worth it. But right now where it sits, Xerneas is definitely not worthy of um, being a meta Pokemon and that's why it needs a buff. At number 9, we got your boy Chestnut, and honestly, I don't think Chestnut is that bad of a Pokemon either. I think it really just lacks the hard-hitting uh, physical move to go along with its really good purple move. Now, its purple move, it says that this battle opponent, or the battle opponent is knocked 2 steps back and gains weight 3, which is pretty good. It's similar to Heatran's uh, purple move, except um, you don't get burned. The burn is really nice, but um, you also gain like an extra weight for the spiky shield move. And Hammer Arm, if you hit the uh, opponent and you knock it out, or if you go neutral with it, you gain weight, which honestly isn't that good either. So I don't know why they did that. Honestly, I think Chestnut deserves a, a move like a Hammer Arm that has 110 or something like that, just so it can't just get totally destroyed by Zapdos. Because at this point in the meta, Zapdos is running around everywhere. And with the likes of Zapdos around, literally if Zapdos hits its Thunder Crash move versus this thing, anything on this wheel, Zapdos kills it. Unless um, if this thing is like chain 10 or something like that and Zapdos hasn't been chained at all. But let's be honest, Zapdos definitely has a chain level on it. Sitting at number 8, we got Lucario. Now honestly, I thought this thing would be a 3 MP Pokemon just by the looks of it. It has a similar uh, wheel spinner compared to like Greninja or Genesect or any of the runners in this game. And honestly, this Pokemon is pretty underwhelming for an EX, considering it has a 1 star purple move, a quarter of the wheel is dodge, an 8% miss, and a 70 metal claw. Now, metal claw really isn't that good of a move, as you guys can see, it only hits 70. And metal claw is going to be pretty, um, pretty underwhelming. If this thing had like iron tail that hit like 100, or something like that, just to make up for it being a 2 MP Pokemon, it wouldn't be as bad, or if it had like a 3 star purple. Like if you look at Blaziken's um, Cyclone Kick, like what is this Aura Sphere? Aura Sphere is like a classic move, I've never heard of Blaziken having a Cyclone Kick. And it's it's only 1 star and Blaziken's 3 star, so I don't know why they did that. The only difference in this is um, you can knock out a Pokemon behind it if you choose. And um, that's pretty much the only thing. Like I said, I think this Pokemon should get a plus 1 MP, so it should be 3 MP or it should be able to hit a at least 100. Even 110 wouldn't even be that bad. I really don't think it would be that overpowered. Well, actually, it would be similar to Blaziken's wheel. I think if it did get the one, actually I don't think 110 would be viable. I think 100 would be good. Just because um, you'd have to be um, sending like Zapdos against it if you wanted to knock this thing out with the chain level or something on it. But anyways, I think Lucario deserves at least a bit of a damage buff or at least a plus one MP buff. Sitting at number 7, we got Delphox. Now Delphox is actually a pretty cool Pokemon. The ability of Magikrig is actually really cool. If you spin a miss, whether it gets knocked out, whether it's a neutral turn, this Pokemon allows you to get one of your plates back. And other than that, this Pokemon is pretty underwhelming, considering it has a 28 Fire Blast, which does 70 damage, a 2 star purple move, which allows you to move opponents 3 steps away from this Pokemon, you can move it over top of Pokemon as well a 20% flamethrower, 
and um, you get burned if you knock this Pokemon out while getting that, or if it's neutral, you get burned as well. And honestly, this Pokemon suffers once again from just Pokemon are able to outpower it. And I really think that if you got one plus one MP on this Pokemon, or if it got like 100 Fire Blast instead of a 70, this Pokemon would be a little bit better. Sitting at number six, we got Dialga. Now, it's kind of sad considering this thing is literally a part of the creation trio, which seems to be a trend of being bad Pokemon. And the ability of this Pokemon, Time Distortion, makes it so it can't move off the bench until every other Pokemon has moved off the bench before it. And if you look at its wheel, it's honestly not that great either. Like, if you look at Deoxys attacks, much, much better with a much, much better ability. As the 130 same as Deoxys attack, and also has a gigantic Dragon Claw, which is actually bigger than the Roar of Time. And then it has a couple misses. Um, at level 4, or at level 5, sorry, this thing has 8% miss, which isn't really bad. But if you just look at the Dragon Claw, 70%, it just gets outpowered by so many things, and it just can't be consistent because of it. And once again, if you if this Pokemon gets knocked out, and you have other Pokemon on your bench, you can't even move it off the bench until your other Pokemon are moved off the bench. So in my opinion, Dialga definitely needs a buff, whether it's a better ability, whether I honestly don't think it needs a another um, a, like plus one MP or something like that. If it had like a 140 move, that was like 56% of the wheel or something like that. Something that can actually make this thing viable because it's a part of the damn creation trio. And <laughs> it literally just deserves to be like strong considering it's Dialga, so. At number five, we got Palkia. Now this thing has the exact same issue that Dialga has considering it has the large 70 attack and it doesn't even hit 130, it hits 120. It has a smaller miss, but this Pokemon still has the same ability, you can't get off the bench until all the other Pokemon are off the bench. It has an even greater 70 area, which I cannot stress this Pokemon is just like, it gets beat by so many things and can't be consistent because of those large 70 areas. It can be consistent at hitting 70, <laughs> that's all you can really say. Um, the Spatial Rend is literally just a 32% spot, which is like the same as Zapdos' Crash move, but you just can't rely on it. At least Zapdos' other moves are pretty defensive and it can't get knocked out as easy as this thing can. Like, if you hit 70 and you're playing in a metagame, this thing's almost guaranteed to die unless you're going up against a Mew or something like that, where it could actually be useful. But like I said, this thing has the exact same problem that Dialga has, except it's actually weaker. So what did, what I can do, like what I can think of to make this thing better is you could increase the size of Spatial Rend and you could leave it at, you could even leave it at 120, but just decrease those size of those 70s or even like give this Pokemon like a purple move in place of one of the Dragon Claws, at least the Dragon Claw will be like less chance to, to hit it. And if you have a purple move, it can like even be like a defensive move or even something that would make this Pokemon like move Pokemon since it's like the space time Pokemon. And yeah, that's what I really think. I think this thing should get a buff, whether it's attack buffs, whether it's a, a new purple move, or something that can just make this thing actually like usable in the metagame. At number four, we got Magmortar. Now, Magmortar has a really cool purple move by um, knocking out the opponent and one Pokemon directly behind it is knocked out, but the only problem is how often are Pokemon actually behind another Pokemon in this game, which is uh, pretty hindering of that move. You can't really um, like use it to the fullest potential that it could be. If um, Pokemon were stacked, I could see like if you had two Pokemon in the middle behind each other, and then Megmortar came and used Flame Gun there. But other than that, you don't see too many opportunities to actually use that. And not to mention it has a huge 60, which is 52% of its wheel. That is only 60 damage, and that is pretty, pretty bad. Um, it's gonna get knocked out. This thing is Zapdos food. I don't even know what to say. Like, if the only way this thing is hitting or killing Zapdos is if it hits its uh, miss or if it hits its 50. And like I said, Zapdos is everywhere, and you guys know that all too well, probably. Same with Dio's. You guys know Dio's are there. And this thing just dies. Like, it goes out there and dies. That's what it does. So if this Pokemon had like a, you could even knock down its flame gun to like one star and at least give it like a hundred attacking move or something like that. Or um, three MP would be pretty cool. Although I think a three MP Pokemon that had a uh, instant KO move would be kind of OP. 
but um, other than that, this Pokemon doesn't really need too many buffs, but it just has a, it even has a pretty like decent sized miss. At level 5 it's going to have a 12% miss, and Flame Gun is, it's a very situational move, and Fire Punch is, you guys know, it's, it's not good. It definitely needs a damage buff or an MP buff, and that's all I can really say about this Pokemon. Coming in at number 3 we got Gardevoir which is really a shame to see because I honestly really like Gardevoir as a Pokemon. Unfortunately it has a pretty cool ability which is again really situational with it uh, negates uh, ghost type Pokemon from using their abilities like Infiltrator or Shadow or Gaseous Form like Shuppet, can't go th Shuppet can't go through this Pokemon but once again this Pokemon just has a really underwhelming spinner. It has a Super Psy which is 40 and is 20% of the wheel and has a Moonblast which is 70 and it is 36% um, of the wheel. Together that makes up about a 56% chance of hitting a 70 or a 40, which isn't really that great. And then it has War Pole, which is a really confusing ability. I actually haven't really got the chance to try it out too much, but to my understanding, this Pokemon, like, if you hit War Pole and it goes through, you're allowed to switch the Gardevoir for any Pokemon on your bench, your PC, or on the field. I'm not sure how that works, I've never actually got the chance to try it, but all I can really tell is that this Pokemon is once again really underwhelming considering it only has a 40 and a 70 move which is pretty pretty poor considering it's an EX and it still has uh, the 2 MP and Gardevoir honestly I think deserves to be a bit stronger or have like a better 3 star purple move and I think that's what could really help improve it is having a 3 star purple move that like could shift around something kind of like manipulative like Trevenant's ability that would be pretty cool but like I said this Pokemon definitely deserves a buff at number two we got Giratina now again this thing is a part of the creation trio which I already informed you guys that the creation trio is really bad in this game but basically this thing is kind of similar to the Elgin Pelkey's wheel it just has a bunch of attacks um, it did pick up a better ability where instead of an MP move, you can move this Pokemon through an adjacent Pokemon to a spot next to it. And then you end your turn, you can't even attack it, which is kind of unfortunate. But if you look at this thing's wheel, it has a 8% miss at level 5. It has 40% of the wheel 50, which can even tie with a Mew. And it has 110 Shadow Claw, which is worse, worse than both Yalga and Palkia's uh, signature moves. And not to mention this thing has 1 MP, so honestly there's not too much to say about this one. It really needs a damage buff, or at least an MP buff, because this thing's sitting at 1 MP and has really bad attacks considering it's freaking Giratina. The number one spot of this video goes to Mewtwo. Now, Mewtwo is supposed to be like one of the most powerful Pokemon in the game. In the main games it has like the second highest base stat next to Mega Rayquaza, and if you look at this Pokemon's wheel, it has a 50% almost Psychic Attack, which does 70 damage, and we all know that 70 damage is pretty underwhelming in the current metagame. And then it has the 2 star purple move called Psychic Shove, which basically shoves all of the Pokemon in front of this move in a straight line back and they gain weight 1. And then it has the awesome blue purple, or not blue purple move, <laughs> blue um, annihilate move, which basically if it hits the annihilate move, it's going back to the bench. Unless you your opponent hits another blue move and um, it goes a neutral turn, but other than that, this Pokemon is just super really underwhelming considering it's Mewtwo. And it should gain at least a damage buff, or at least a, like a 3 star psychic shove or something like that, just so that it can make it a more of a usable Pokemon. Like this Pokemon could be pretty cool for defending around the entry point if it had like a 3 star move and like a 100 attack or something like that. That would be a bit more um, fitting for Mewtwo. But unfortunately it just lacks the damage and it lacks the 3 star purple move. And it has a really bad blue move so like honestly there's not too much to say about Mewtwo that's good. Besides the Psychic Shove it could be really cool. Like I can see people freaking out if they hit a Psychic Shove after your, or your opponent surrounds your Pokemon on your goal. It's almost like jet kicking a Pokemon onto the goal and preventing them from winning the game when it's pretty much hopeless. Anyways guys, that is going to be the end of the top 10 video. Let me know in the comments below if you guys agree with this list, if you guys would change out some Pokemon and put other Pokemon in a different spot. But anyways, let me know in the comments below and drop a like and subscribe if you already haven't done that, if you guys are enjoying the content. And we'll talk to you guys later.